All right, joining me once again here on The Matthew Filipovich Show is my friend Miriam Kaba. Miriam is a Chicago-based organizer, educator, and writer. She is the founder and director of Project Nia, a group working to end youth incarceration. She is the writer of the blog Prison Culture, which you can find at usprisonculture.com. You can also follow her on Twitter, at Prison Culture. Miriam, thank you so much for being on the show again. Thanks so much for having me. All right, so Miriam, I think it was the last time you were on, and, and multiple times you've been on the show, we have talked about Anita Alvarez. And obviously, people are aware of the national primaries going on for president. And however, not many people pay too much attention to a lot of these down ballot primaries, which are as equally important. One of them is, in fact, March 15th, which is next Tuesday in Illinois, uh, where Anita Alvarez is in fact being primaried. Um, again, we've talked about her a bit before, but if people aren't aware, why must Anita Alvarez go? Um, so I think that I want to start off by just saying that it is, um, it's important for people to focus a lot on who is running various institutions within your own state and within the city or municipality that you live in, those people often have much more impact on your day-to-day -day living and your quality of life than, you know, the president does, right? Yeah. Frankly, if we're honest about that. And so in our town, in our county, um, Cook County, uh, Anita Alvarez has is our two-term um, state's attorney. And for those who don't know what that is, the state's attorney is basically the chief prosecutor in our case of our county. Um, and so Anita Alvarez has already been in for seven, almost seven and a half years now. Um, she's had two terms. She's running for her third term in office. Um, for people who may not know kind of why we're so focused right now in Chicago on her in particular and on this race in particular, some of you may have heard the name of a young man named Laquan McDonald. And I think we may have already talked, um, Matt, about Laquan and the issue around the holding back of the tape for over 400 days and um, the shooting of this young 17-year-old 16 times by a police officer, um, and then the cover-up, basically, of that particular tape and that incident. Um, Anita Alvarez, as our chief prosecutor, was basically in, had all of the information about this particular incident and did not press charges, did not offer any sort of uh, accountability to the police officer who did this shooting. Uh, just kind of went along with the mayor's office holding on to the tape, um, didn't, you know, move on it. People are very, very upset about that, and, you know, rightly so. Um, however, Anita Alvarez is kind of, you know, the egregious sins, basically, of her office go beyond the Laquan McDonald situation in tape. And so many people in Cook County are banding together now to make sure that she's not basically reelected. And the last thing I'll say is, as in many, many places in Chicago, we're basically, you know, we're a democratic town, right? Yeah. Um, our, our city council is all mostly overwhelming that, like, I don't even know if we have any Republicans in city council. Um, we have a, a democratic mayor in Rahm Emanuel. Um, you know, all of the institutional power is basically a democratic institutional power. Anita Alvarez is also a Democrat. And so for many years, she really didn't have a viable person or reliable people who would run against her in, in the office. This is a very big different situation this year where she has two challengers. Uh, one of those challengers is a woman named Donna Moore, and the second challenger is a woman named Kim Fox. Um, and I can talk a little bit more about uh, both of them you know, if you want. Um, and yeah, absolutely. Let's, 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 let, let's jump right into that because that's, you know, it, it, and, and we'll get back to Alvarez and why she must go, but let's talk about some of her opponent, her two opponents here. Um, is there, t tell us about the strengths and, and I guess weaknesses of both, of both the two that are running against her. Sure. So um, the person who's run, the two people who are running against her, I mentioned Kim Fox and Donna Moore. Donna Moore, 
Um, so, you know, it's interesting, right, because Anita Alvarez is the first Latina woman um, to obviously become Cook County State's attorney. That's a significant thing in a city like Chicago, which has a very large Latino um, population but doesn't have concomitant political power. So you have to understand in our city and in our county, the racial dynamics of this race are also very interesting mm -hmm. because the two challengers, Donna Moore is white and Kim Fox is black. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got this like mix of the kind of racial, uh, you know, racial identities and racial allegiances, which makes the, which makes this uh, even more kind of fraught um, uh, election. Um, but Donna Moore is uh, an attorney um, who literally for the past 20 years has been representing casinos. <laughs> she was a federal. <laughs> she was a federal prosecutor over twenty years ago, and to be honest, almost nobody in Cook County has heard of her. Right. Um, she has come out of nowhere. Mostly, she's been self-financing. She has, you know, what we know about her is that she gave made donations to the current uh, Republican governor, uh, Bruce Rauner. Yeah. So people are. You know, it's like, who is this person? Where is she really coming from? She's very, very unknown. She has had one television commercial that's been running, um, and she said a few things that, you know, seem reasonable. Um, she is against the idea of having a special prosecutor named for the Laquan McDonald case. Of course, so is Anita Alvarez. Um, yeah, so people are unsure about her. And then the uh, other challenger is a woman named Kim Fox, who's more, who's more known um, than Donna Moore is, in that Kim Fox was the former chief of staff for Tony Preckwinkle. Mm -hmm. Tony Preckwinkle is the uh, president of the Cook County Board. Um, and so the way that the um, kind of the way that the attacks that Alvarez are launching towards Kim Fox is that she's part of the machine. That's that the the that you know basically that she's handpicked by, um, by uh, Tony Preckwinkle because Tony Preckwinkle really dislikes Anita Alvarez so much. It is true that Tony Preckwinkle and Anita Alvarez don't go along. The main reason is because Cook County Board President has the purse strings for making the budget for the county. Um, and also has a lot of influence as a result over the Cook County Jail. And Tony um, has been a basically a, reform, uh, a reformer around criminal punishment issues and has wanted very much to have the juvenile jail closed and has wanted to decarcerate significantly the Cook County Jail for adults. And um, Anita Alvarez has been an opponent of those measures. And so they've clashed a great deal over the past few years. And Kim is running, you know, as a reformer as well, um, somebody who believes that particularly low-level offenses should not be prosecuted in the ways that they are. She's a proponent of some restorative justice, to a, you know, to a certain degree. She is just more progressive in that sense around issues of crime and punishment and violence than um, Anita Alvarez is. And so those are the challengers to Anita Alvarez. So we have this really interesting moment that we actually have, I think, in Kim Fox in particular, a very strong challenger um, to Anita Alvarez. The last thing I'll say about that is that Anita Alvarez is from the last poll that was done over a month ago, I think now, Anita Alvarez was still ahead in the polls. Um, and, you know, that's not surprising in that she has the support, mostly, her support base is white people, particularly liberal, rich whites, um, in the suburbs and in the north side of Chicago. And she has the support from Latinos in the various communities, again, name recognition, racial solidarity, um, you know, pride, all sorts of stuff that would explain why Latinos would want to support the first Latina in this position that's very powerful. Um, so that's a little bit about kind of the, the election and, you know, uh, who, the, who the, the challengers are and what, what's happening in terms of who, who's strong and, you know, who still needs to be um, 
yeah. Yeah, and no. We, and, we have questions about. And, and so la, the Latino community, all right, I, I, that, 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 that's understandable. I, I get that. White people, come on, man, come on. I mean, just especially, at, you know, <laughs> all right, maybe maybe the, the burbs. I, I, I get you racist out in the burbs, but come on, Northsiders, stop being such such horrible, horrible racist. For the love of God, I, it just, I, 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 what's, what's, and, and again, it doesn't really surprise me either. I mean, like, this is also the same, you know, city that, so, you know, reelected Rahm Emanuel again, you know, so it's, there's a lot of like corrupt, awful Democrats in Chicago who really kind of don't really care about these things and actually are perfectly fine with the way things are. Um, but yeah, so, so yeah, like, you know, white people, Northsiders, <laughs> get, get your act yeah. together. This is, this is ridiculous. You actually have an opportunity here to actually show, yeah, this is, this is actually an opportunity where we're literally, you have this, this horrible, horrible prosecutor has done horrible, horrible things, uh, you know, primarily to the black community of Chicago, show up for the love of God.